Well, the good news is those annoying political spam text messages have stopped because the election is over. The bad news is, well, I'll get into that. And I almost didn't do a video because at least at this point, this early, the outcome of the key races aren't even known. Uh, so we'll get into some of the craziness. Of course, the media was upset that uh, nobody really cares what they have to say anymore. Everyone at CNN is developing an inferiority complex because, well, they are <laughs> inferior especially compared to a guy in his kitchen on a laptop, and they've lost over a million viewers over the last several years. And so they started their election coverage yesterday, begging people not to pay any attention to social media and to trust them instead. Stay off social media, people, if you're trying to figure out, if you're trying to figure out, are there really issues with voting? Trust your local officials, trust us here, trust a news source that you know and trust to be honest about this. They're doing their jobs and they're doing it right. Trust CNN, he says. Like all normal people, conservatives, I was extremely excited early in the evening, especially watching reports like this. We just got, my, I'm told we just got Miami Dade. This is a big one in Florida. Let's take a look at, okay. This, we got the, yeah. So let's put this in some perspective. Well, the Latinos aren't down with the woke crap. And in a highly concentrated Democrat area, the majority of them went for Marco Rubio. Miami-Dade County has two and three quarter million people. In 2016, this was a Democratic county by 30 points. Hillary Clinton won this county by 30 points. Miami-Dade is 70 percent Hispanic. It began shifting to the, to the Republicans in 2020. Donald Trump only lost it by seven. And look at this. In the mail-in and early vote, which again tends to be more Democratic friendly, Marco Rubio, the Republican, is outright leading in Miami-Dade County by seven points over Val Demings, the Democratic challenger. Many Republicans were bracing for the red wave, which sadly, obviously didn't materialize. But many Democrats were also bracing for that as well. So the New York Times issued five ways to soothe stress, including breathing exercises and plunging your face into a bowl of ice water for 15 to 30 seconds to get up and take a walk around the block <laughs> to offer some relief, it says, for an uneasy mind. Breathe like a baby. Well, they have the mentality of a baby. And to limit your scrolling, consider plotting out specific times when you will look for election updates. One of Joy Reid's black supremacist friends and contributor to MSNBC, Jason Johnson, who you probably have seen over the years spewing his anti-whiteism, was so concerned that Republicans were going to have a red wave that he started undermining our democracy even before the results were in. The level of voter suppression is beyond anything that we saw in 2018. So I think it's completely up in the air. There has been youth turnout at levels we haven't expected. Democrats feel confident. Republicans I've spoken to feel confident. But we can't say that whatever happens tonight is a fair and equitable election because there have been too many laws passed by election deniers to keep people from being able to express themselves. I thought that kind of talk incites an insurrection. Better ban this clown from Twitter. Speaking of election deniers, Stacey Abrams lost her gubernatorial race down in Georgia again. You may recall that in 2018 she lost and then started undermining our democracy by refusing to concede and spewing conspiracy theories. And so this time, apparently she has been rehabilitated. She must have got a call from Nancy Pelosi and told her what to do. And so she did admit defeat. And when I first saw this, I thought, that's a funny meme, but... Then I thought, maybe it is actually real because the liberals are so crazy that it's impossible to tell whether or not something is a joke or something that they are doing or believe. So I went to her Instagram page and I double checked and it is actually <laughs> real. She really did post this. And I think on her birthday, little miss future governor of the great state of Georgia. <laughs> Remember when Hillary Clinton made that mistake? You never want to do such a foolish thing. Happy birthday to this future president. I'm trying to find some ways to lighten the mood because as of last night, things weren't looking too good for us. Um, things aren't looking too good for Beto O'Rourke either, though, which is good news for us. He lost his bid for the governor down there in Texas. You may recall that he challenged Ted Cruz for the Senate, lost. Then he ran for the president and he was portrayed as the next Kennedy. And then he lost. And now he lost a third time. <laughs> so there's really nothing more for him to lose at this point. Marjorie Taylor Greene won re-election. So, of course, the liberals are losing their mind. The New York Times declares that Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's 
Racist and anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. You're not supposed to talk about George Soros funding the Democrat Party, of course. They put her on the fringes of the Republican Party when she was first elected two years ago, was re-elected on Tuesday, and is poised to play a more central role in the next Congress. <laughs> Ron DeSantis won re-election in Florida by a whopping 20 points and then gave this incredible victory speech. We have embraced freedom. We have maintained law and order. We have protected the rights of parents. We have respected our taxpayers. And we reject woke ideology. And we mock it, too. We must mock it. We fight the woke in the legislature. We fight the woke in the schools. We fight the woke in the corporations. We will never, ever surrender to the woke mob. Florida is where woke goes to die. This is fantastic, but unfortunately, in Pennsylvania, Democrats elected one of their own. Someone with brain damage. John Fetterman won. And again, at the time that I'm recording this late Tuesday night, the outcome of the Senate race in Georgia is unknown, which now is what hinges upon us taking control of the Senate. And things could get really strange down there because if neither of those guys get 50% because there's a third party libertarian who is siphoning off a couple percent of the votes, it looks, then they're going to have to have another election just between Raphael Warlock and Herschel Walker, just the two of them, the two top uh, contenders in the race. But things might get really tense here really soon. Donald Trump said that on Tuesday, uh, November 15th, he's going to make a big announcement. Everybody's expecting that he's going to announce that he's going to run for president. He may not. He may just be teasing. He may be bluffing. If he does, he's going to let a lot of people down. But at a rally just last week, he insulted Ron DeSantis for the first time when he was going through some polls about who was favored to be the Republican. Listen to this if you haven't heard. Trump at 71, Ron DeSanctimonious at 10%, Mike Pence at 7. Oh, Mike's doing better than I thought. Trump Ron DeSanctimonious. First time he's ever insulted Ron DeSantis, at least publicly. That was a shot fired. And now there are a growing number of Republicans, including Matt Walsh and Mike Cernovich, who are openly saying that they prefer Ron DeSantis over Donald Trump. And if those two end up running against each other in 2024, if one of them doesn't decide to stand down and let the other one go ahead, if they go head to head, it might be a disaster. The only thing that could have possibly alleviated some of the disappointment and sadness about the midterms this year is if Brian Stelter still worked for CNN and was covering it. So please, Brian, come back to television soon. It's times like these that we all need someone to laugh at.